here let us discuss about anterior triangle of the neck anterior triangle of the neck lies between the midline of neck as well as sternocleidomastoid muscle and it is further subdivided into smaller triangles now let us see the boundaries of the anterior triangle of the neck it has three boundaries medial boundary lateral boundary as well as the superior boundary medial boundary is formed by the anterior median plane and the lateral boundary is formed by the sternocleidomastoid muscle where the superior boundary is formed by the base of the mandible and the line joining the angle of mandible to the mastoid process and these are the three boundaries of the anterior triangle of the neck and this anterior triangle is further subdivided by the digastric muscle as well as the superior belly of the omohyoid into submental digastric as well as carotid and muscular triangles so these are the four triangles which are embedded within the anterior triangle of the neck and the first one is the submental triangle the submental triangle is the median triangle and it is bounded by on each side there is anterior belly of the corresponding digastric muscles and its base is formed by the body of the hyoid bone where its apex lies at the chin and the floor of the triangle is formed by the right and left mylohyoid muscles and the median raphe uniting them what are the contents over here two to four small submental lymph nodes which are situated in the superficial fascia between the anterior bellies of the digastric muscles and they drain the superficial tissues below the chin central part of the lower lip the adjoining gums the anterior part of the floor of the mouth and the tip of the tongue where these efferents pass to the submandibular lymph nodes and there are like two small submental veins joined to form the anterior jugular vein in this triangle and next one is the digastric triangle what are the boundaries of the digastric triangle the boundaries of the digastric triangle are as you can see in this picture antero inferiorly it is formed by the anterior belly of the digastric and postero inferiorly it is formed by the posterior belly of the digastric as well as stylohyoid muscle superiorly which is also called as a base is formed by the base of the mandible and the line joining the angle of the mandible to the mastoid process where the roof of the digastric triangle is formed by the following structures that is skin superficial fascia containing platysma the cervical branch of the facial nerve also present at this location as well as you can see the ascending branch of the transverse or anterior cutaneous nerve of the neck and finally the deep fascia which splits to enclose the submandibular salivary glands and let us talk about the floor the floor is formed by the mylohyoid muscle anteriorly and by the hyoglossus muscle posteriorly and a small part of the middle constrictor muscle of the pharynx also appears in the floor let us talk about the contents of the triangle as you can see over here in the anterior part of the triangle the structures which are superficial to the mylohyoid are superficial part of the submandibular salivary gland and the facial vein as well as the submandibular lymph nodes which are superficial to it as well as the facial artery which is deep to it next is the submental artery mylohyoid nerve as well as muscles and the hypoglossal nerve and other relations we will study in detail when we talk about submandibular region next is about the posterior part of the triangle as you can see the posterior part of the triangle over here the superficial structures are the lower part of the parotid gland as well as the external carotid artery before it enters the parotid gland and the deep structures passing between the external carotid arteries are the stylo glossus and the stylopharyngeal glossopharyngeal nerve 
and the pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve, the styloid process and a part of the parotid gland. And what are the deep structures? The deep structures include internal carotid artery, internal jugular vein and the vagus nerve. And this is what is about digastric triangle. And next one is the carotid triangle. Let us discuss first about the boundaries of the carotid triangle. Superior boundary is formed by the posterior belly of the digastric muscle as well as stylohyoid muscle. Inferior boundary is formed by the superior belly of the omohyoid and posteriorly the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and these three are the boundaries of the carotid triangle. And what about the roof? The roof of the triangle is formed by the following structures from superficial to deep that is skin, superficial fascia containing platysma and cervical branch of the facial nerve as well as the transverse cutaneous nerve of the neck. And after the superficial fascia, next what you can see is the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia and these are the structures which form the roof of the carotid triangle. And what about the floor? The floor is formed by the parts of the middle constrictor of the pharynx and a part of the inferior constrictor of the pharynx and thyrohyoid membrane. And these are the structures which form the floor. And what about the contents? The carotid triangle is extremely important for the neurovascular structures. If you see the arteries, that is the common carotid artery with a carotid sinus and the carotid body at its termination is very important structure what you can see in the carotid triangle. Along with this, you can see the bifurcation of the common carotid artery into internal carotid artery as well as external carotid artery. Not only that, you can see few branches of the external carotid artery also in the carotid triangle that is the superior thyroid artery, lingual artery, facial artery, ascending pharyngeal and occipital branches, even all these branches arise by the external carotid artery from the carotid triangle. And what about the veins? The important veins which are seen in this triangle are the internal jugular vein and the common facial vein which is draining into internal jugular vein and the pharyngeal vein which usually ends in the internal jugular vein and also what you can see over here is the lingual vein which usually terminates in the internal jugular vein. So all these veins terminate in the internal jugular vein. And what about the nerves? Important nerve what you can see in the carotid triangle is the vagus nerve. Along with this one can find the superior laryngeal branch of the vagus which is dividing into external as well as internal laryngeal nerves. And other nerves are the spinal accessory nerve, hypoglossal nerve and the sympathetic chain which runs vertically downwards posterior to that of the carotid sheet and lymph nodes. The deep cervical lymph nodes are the one which are situated along the line of the internal jugular vein which includes jugulodigastric node as well as jugulo-omohyoid node above the inferior belly of the omohyoid muscles and these are the nodes and this is what you need to know about the carotid triangle and next one is the muscular triangle what are the boundaries of the muscular triangle anterior boundary is formed by the anterior median line of the neck from hyoid bone to the sternum and posterior superiorly it is formed by the superior belly of the omohyoid muscle and posterior inferiorly it is formed by the lower part of the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and these are the structures which forms the boundary of the muscular triangle and what about the contents the infrahyoid muscles are the chief contents of this triangle these muscles are also considered to be the structures which are forming the floor of this triangle and what are the infrahyoid muscles? The infrahyoid muscles are sternohyoid, sternothyroid, thyrohyoid and omohyoid muscles. And by this we completed the anterior triangle of the neck.